DM wanted a minimum 1,000 word backstory to be considered to join his campaign. While back I was on r slash lfg, trying to find a game to join. Found a DM looking for players for a dark, gritty campaign. Seemed interesting? So I reached out. DM was super sketchy with his setting, not wanting to share any details. They'd only had one session so far, and three out of five players dropped out. Wouldn't say why. Every time I'd ask about his world, he said that I needed to discover things for myself. Like, I understand wanting to keep things mysterious, but then he said I needed to write a minimum 1,000 word backstory to be considered for the campaign. I'd ask about his world so I could figure out a backstory, but he wouldn't share anything except a city that was dealing with a plague. Seemed crazy to me that he would expect this from people for a chance to join. Three out of five players agree. This DM sucks ass. But seriously, you as a DM want a 1,000 page backstory when you've literally given the players nothing to work with? All I'm saying is don't be surprised if that 1,000 page backstory has more word bloat than a middle school essay. My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to the Crow's Perch. From atop my perch, we delve into the latest RPG horror stories. In today's story by user Lil Throwaway, we find out what happens when a player sabotages a newbie campaign and invites his friends to spectate the entire ordeal. So without further ado, let's gather up a murder and dive right into this story. Recently, a group of friends completed our first D&D campaign together. However, we ended the campaign with one less party member than we started out with, and that in itself was a roller coaster. A little bit of backstory. We as a group of six had decided to run a campaign together. We game frequently, almost daily, and had been meaning to try Dungeons & Dragons for a while. Our Dungeon Master volunteer had played before, but was a first time DM. And the rest of us were newbies, first time players, everyone except one guy. I will refer to him as Mark. So Mark was a big time D&D player. I'm talking multiple times a week for years on end. He knew most of the rules, like the back of his hand, and so on. He offered to guide us through the character creation process and answer any questions, stepping in to help us or the DM when it was needed. We were all super appreciative of this, and created a Discord server to begin our campaign. For the first campaign, he invited a DM friend of his into the server to help our DM with his first session and get things going. Everything went well, and we spent most of the session learning, but had fun. After this, our DM stated that since this was our first campaign, that he wasn't going to be too harsh or mean on rules. As a fan of story, he wanted to see where we took things and gave us the opportunity to explore the world around us, rather than focusing solely on killing us all off. A few sessions in and we were a few levels higher, and for the most part had the basics down. At this stage, our characters were learning feats and subclasses, etc. I ended up playing an arcane trickster rogue a moody and sarcastic half-elf finch who was more forced into the situation slash party than participating of her own free will. Adding to her character, I picked out a dark and moody owl familiar to go with her, which would come to be known to the party as the Anger Bird. The DM loves it, loves the character, and the way she interacts with the party. Mark, on the other hand, not so much. He spent more time finching about how owls were broken and encouraging the DM to go out of the way to kill the familiar I had just learned how to use. What was interesting was about this time, we noticed that as he had helped us build the characters, that he had seemed to ensure that everyone was on a similar level. Everyone apart from himself, that is. Somehow, Mark had manipulated his character into being incredibly overpowered in the entire first half of the campaign. At times when each character, rogue, cleric, fighter, etc., would average 10 to 15 damage around, 
He was averaging 30 to 40. He constantly rubbed this in our faces and began to mock us when we would ask idiot questions if we were unsure of anything. Later down the line, we discovered that when he had helped with creation of another player, Ben's character, that he had purposely told him to put the wrong stats in the wrong areas as to ensure that Ben's character wasn't as strong as his own. They were the same class, and the only doubled up class in the party. As first time players, we didn't catch on to these wonky stats until much more time had passed. For the next few months, we sort of let things slide as much as possible. Because no matter what, he was making people feel inferior at times, and we were all having fun for the most part. Now, playing through the second half of the campaign, things just got crazy. He would argue for minutes on end if he disagreed with anything anyone said, or a party decision that didn't go his way. Once, we literally wasted 90 minutes arguing over which path to take because the party had decided on one, but he was hell-bent on the other. At this point, the DM literally stepped in and said, Spoiler alert! You literally visit these paths one after another, so please, just choose. This is where it became more obvious that Mark was really just trying to take over the campaign because he viewed us as inferior to himself. He would constantly complain that the DM was being too nice to us and encouraged him to kill us off, even though the DM constantly stated he wasn't going to go out of his way to do that. He began harming other players in combat without a care. And I'm not talking about a botched role. He would cast area of effect spells without any warning and did so to kill off my owl familiar when he was convinced the DM wasn't trying hard enough to kill it. These situations didn't just occur with me. He seemed to find things about each player's character to hate on and argue about. I am simply recalling my own personal experiences as it's easier that way. So down the track, I'm getting really used to using my character's abilities and stats outside of battle. She had background as a thief, but carried a Robin Hood approach at most times. One of our party members was broke, and his character in need of an extra protection. My character had unexpectedly bonded with the party. They often referred to her as their moody teen. So, at a local market, I had opted to attempt and sneak around and steal a ring that offered him an AC bonus. With a 3,000 word backstory, oh my god, I think this is the guy the DM in the first story was looking for, involving being a talented thief that the DM had read over before the campaign. Paired with rolls of 29 and 27, the DM pretty much decided that it was a flawless execution. Of course, Mark didn't like this. Even though it was perfectly in character for my rogue to do such a thing, he began to stir up commotion about the whole ordeal out of character, and eventually, we had to just move on. Multiple voice chat join sounds go off, and I take a look. Two or three people join, and Mark begins to stream the Roll20 page to them. Weird, but not the first time he had streamed, so I kinda brush it off. Well, guess what? About 20 minutes later into the story, guards show up about an anonymous tip they had received about the theft. After much back and forth, we are able to convince them that we had nothing to do with such things and that the claims are false. Mark then insists that the guards cast a detect magic spell to try and identify it. This frustrates us slightly, but alas, when they cast it, it doesn't add to the proof as the party members were pretty much overloading with magical items. Eventually, the guards drop everything and let us go. But of course, this wasn't good enough for Mark. At this stage, another one of our players was straight up questioning whether Mark was the anonymous tipper. Mark offered to rat out the thief if they would let everyone else go. In other words, sacrificing my character, who had, in her own way, stolen the ring as an act of kindness. This was a huge character development for her. The DM was clearly uncomfortable at this stage, 
and in character, pondered it before agreeing. Mark, with no hesitation, pointed my character out. At this point, it had been two hours since the theft, and the whole situation felt like a huge waste of time. Our sessions were only three hours long total, so time wasted would push us back another week. Usually pretty down to earth, now I was pretty pissed, both in character and out of character. I wasn't having fun anymore, at all. So quickly, I interjected, saying I was going to roll initiative, because there's no way my character would just let herself be given up and taken away for a rest like that. The party's characters were quick to follow, now that they felt a close bond to my rogue. The first thing Mark does is cast an invisibility spell on himself and remove himself from combat, which earned an eye roll from us all. The guards were fairly easy, and we were having no struggles. Seriously, sneak attack advantage with that owl was sweet. After waiting months, I had quite literally just had an opportunity to cast Find Familiar again. Prior to all this, Mark decides to join combat again. But why? To kill my familiar once more. Of course, knowing how excited I had been to get it back and use it to enhance my combat options. He had also opted to damage the party member who had stuck up for me. We finally finish the battle and have to end the session there, everyone feeling rather sour. To chill out, after the messy previous three hours, me and a couple of the other party members switch to playing some mini-games and party games. Well, while we are over there chilling, our fighter had been AFK for the last minutes of the session, and returned to D&D voice chat to leave, when he found Mark and his friends talking about us behind our backs, unaware that he had returned, as he was muted. They had something negative to say about pretty much everyone, talking endlessly about how stupid we could be, about how we didn't know the rules properly, about how much better his character in their campaign was, laughing at us, and dragging the DM's name through the dirt. The DM, who was getting up at 5 a.m. to run these sessions. The fighter made a point to call them all out on this, and made the rest of us aware. Yeah, screw Mark. Mark's attitude is abhorrent. He knows first off that the DM is new. He should know second off, that he isn't the main character. And third off, who the flock rules Lawyer's 5th edition and brings in his bitch boys in the back to talk shift? You got something to say. Say it with your chest, my man. This mindset is such typical cowardly gatekeeping that does nothing but stroke your own ego at the cost of destroying new players' introductions to the game. Oof, I'm steamy right now. Alright, but we're almost through it, so back to the story. A hostile conversation broke out between the rest of the players while me and the others played party games, and eventually, he lost it, leaving in a rage of insults and blocking everyone, and deleting the campaign with all of our info, since he had been the one to organize it. In a short sense, he godmodded the campaign over months of inboxing the DM, and getting him to make changes whenever he was in disagreement, and went on to constantly sabotage the party, and livestream it to his friends, for them to mock and insult us behind our backs afterwards. In the end, it actually helped me in my character, which was the opposite of his intentions. After the battle, she bonded with the party like family, and we got to play out the scene of the party characters, holding him prisoner. It was unanimously decided that it could only be fitting if my rogue would do the honors. Going on, we finished the campaign strong. Some near-death experiences, but everyone was still in one piece. We all had so much fun and laughs, and seriously enjoyed the time we spent together playing the campaign out. We're already planning another campaign, and two or three of us are writing homebrew content for our DM to run. Oh, and bonus, after the events of the campaign, our DM had our characters enter a dream realm where we fought Mark as our final boss, giving us the sweet satisfaction of being able to end him all over again. Oh, and despite all possibilities, my rogue was the one to deliver the final blow. Again. 
The party found it hilarious, and we could not have asked for a better ending. Remember, don't be like Mark. Nobody likes Mark. A fitting end to this goober of a player. Though, I kinda hope the owl would get the final blow when they had reached the Mark final boss. Mark saw himself so clearly superior to his fellow party members, heckling them for their characters and decisions, all while cackling away like a knoll to his buddies. Good riddance. It sounds like the players are having much more fun going into their second campaign, now devoid of any traces of Mark. Thank you for tuning into this week's story, and a special thank you to the Crow's Perch patrons. Mm, should I do a spooky voice? I am recording this on Halloween, so maybe do a spooky voice. Beware the burbs who have pledged a single dollar to the Crow's Perch, R6, and Reuven Gritters. <laughs> but let's not forget the Counts of Quills, Sawyer Rangan, Kooky Spooks, Rikes, Mexican, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, and Netscape Navigator. But they have nothing on the Barons of Beaks. Matthew Mulcrini, Vincent, Den of the Drake, Mickey Eatley, and Anya. But what is a Baron to a Duke? A Duke of Feathers, Stevie. Doc Salty 96, Vanishing Thoughts, and Acroth. Oh god, this is gonna kill my voice later. But thank you, all of you. All this pain, it's for you, my patrons. And if you'd like to be a patron, please consider following the link in the description down below, where you yourself can become a patron to the Crow's Perch. It helps support the channel and helps me buy coffee every week. Which you should never give to a bird, but apparently you can give them fruit juice. Cool, cool bird, bird facts, facts with, with crow. crow. Speaking of cool things, what's cooler than Art of the Week? Art of the Week! This week's Art of the Week, by user Lemming on the Crow's Perch Discord, is a sketch based on a one-off comment from my previous video, mentioning what would my evil twin brother look like. As you can see, this dastardly bastard... Sean Gull is in the process of devising another one of his evil schemes, judging by the smirk on his face. That or he just posted cringe in the odd hours of the night. My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to the- uh, What are you doing here? Howdy gamers, it's your boy Sean Gull here. I had like three Jaeger bombs, so it's time to round up a colony and swoop right into this story. So anyway, in this story, a user in a 4chan poll thread makes a really good point about <clears throat> This is why we don't talk about Sean Gull. You yourself can submit your own fan art simply by posting on the art channel on the Crow's Perch Discord, or by submitting it to me via email. With all of that out of the way, I will see you next time. As the crow flies. <laughs>